All right, so we're continuing with cricket on the Sports Fact Zone. West Indies dominated the second day of their three-day warm-up encounter against a Cricket Australia 11 in Adelaide to lead by 214 runs with one day to play. Passing a second time, the Windies ended on 137 for three with Joshua De Silva on 55 and Kavem Hodge, who scored a half-century in the first innings on 44. Earlier in the day, the West Indians dismissed Cricket Australia 11 for 174 on the back of a terrific post-launch period where they grabbed 6 for 22. There were two wickets each for Kemar Roach, Alzari Joseph and Shamar Joseph, while Akeem Jordan, Justin Graves, Gurukesh Moji and Kevin Sinclair claimed a wicket each. Well, the man who captured most attention, though, was the 24-year-old Shamar Joseph with his spell of 2 for 28 in 8 overs. The Guyanese bowled with ferocious pace and in one headline of the Cricket Australia website, he's described as the quick from nowhere who has revived memories of Windy's greats. Joseph spoke after the day's play. That's, that's just it. Um, I think I was a bit too fast to the crease, so that wouldn't bring the no ball. To me so uh just adjust myself and just getting back to my rhythm and that worked well for me today all right so who is shamar joseph and of course how did he garner so much attention of the regional cricketing body so let's get some answers now from the guyana cricket board president bisundia singh who joins us this afternoon via zoom good afternoon how are you yeah good afternoon to you and your viewers also i'm fine all right, so let's talk about the man of the moment, Shamar Joseph. Talk to yeah. me about one, how, you know, he got involved in cricket, of course, how the Ghana Cricket Board was able to spot his talent, and he's been doing great things, of course, on his debut. All right, so let me start by saying Shamar is only 24 years old, and um, he was born in a place named Barakara in Borbis. Okay. This is... Uh, two hours from New Amsterdam. So let me tell you where is New Amsterdam. It's about an hour from Georgetown. So an hour from Georgetown and then two hours from New Amsterdam, and this is the bar car. And you go there by a boat. You can't go driving there. No, um, he he played um, not too much, but um, maybe about a year or so for Togborough Club. So Togborough Park Cricket Club, is the same club where Romario Shepard and Niall Smith plays for. Um, so he was just somebody coming out playing on one or two matches there, and then he never played for Barbies or anything for Guyana at the youth level or anything, just playing cricket because he loved it. He was a security guard then. He left the security service in 2022 and moved to Georgetown, hoping that um, someone will see him and um, identify his talent. And so, we used to be training in Georgetown at the Georgetown Cricket Club growing up border and um he would come around and you know ask to join in that session with the um contracted players. And we also have what you call emergent players. So you have fifteen contracted players and the GCB put together another thirteen who we believe can challenge the other fifteen to get their contract. So he came in and he joined just like that. Um asked him if he can get an opportunity to bowl. So he started just like that, playing with the emergent players. Um, Sar Ramnare Sarwan, who is our chairman of Selector, um, apparently he was looking at th this guy and said, you know, he, this is something we got to de deal with now. Um, so he, we, we brought him in as an emergent player in 2022, 2020, well, the ending part of 2022. Um, so we brought him also in the inter-county. Well, it, let me explain what's the inter-county. Inter-county is three counties competing for supremacy. And what we do, we add a next team to that that three um, um, teams because there are a lot of players who get left out from their counties and they could possibly make a guy on the team. And so what we do, we, we form another team and call it a Select 11. So Shamar played for the Select 11. And um, the selection panel decided that he's good enough to make a guy on the side. However, um, on the trip going up to 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 um, the West Indies tournament, after he made the four day, um, the Super Fifty, we had a little problem uh, getting a spot for him, 
However, the GCB invested and we got the permission from the guy on the cricket board so that he could tour with the team, he could practice with the team and so on. Yeah. He can't play. Halfway through that, we had an injury to Ransford Beaton and he joined the squad. So from that, the rest is no history. You know where he is. Right. And when you saw him play, what was special about this player in your view? You, when you look at Shamar Joseph, right, you would believe that he come to the cricketing system. He was everything clean, neat, good ball in action, strong, fit, always ready to train. And um, we have a rigorous training program. And what was kind of surprising with fitness level, he was in the top three. You know, and so we, we also, um, you know, by now the territorial boards have a strength and conditioning coach. Um, we, 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 got, we are now receiving the services of uh, state of the art gym. And Shamar goes there almost at every opportunity to ensure that he's, um, he's fit. I, 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 I see a huge future of Shamar. I mean, I'm, I'm Guyana and uh, I believe we are proud of him. The same thing when he practiced with the Amazon Warriors. It's just a matter of time when he made the team. Yeah, President, how excited are Guyanese cricket fans, though, about Shamar? Because um, Ghana doesn't have a tradition of producing outstanding fast bowlers. Um, there are other Caribbean countries that can boast producing fast bowlers more than the Guyanese can. I know Colin Croft, you know, would, would probably jump up and say something to me now. But um, right. generally speaking, Ghana produces outstanding spinners and, and batters. How excited are the Guyana cricket fans about the prospects of this, this fiery pacer? Very, very much. I mean, Shamar is special. I mean, arriving from just one and a half year, never played youth cricket, and just burst out on the scene like that. I mean, it's like an amazing thing that actually happened to Guyana cricket. And I sure, I'm sure all our cricket fans are proud of Shamar Joseph. And uh, talk to us about the... The, the trajectory, because at the moment, there are a lot of West Indies cricket fans who are disappointed that the, the image of West Indies fast bowling has, has tempered over, over, the, over the decades. Of course, coming from the 70s and 80s when there were fearsome West Indies fast bowlers. Do you see Shamar as the kind of bowler that can rekindle some of that fire in West Indies fast bowling? It's just a matter of time. You could, you could see it as just a matter of time. Um, and once given the opportunity, I don't think anyone could stop him. Um, see, the key thing is that Shamar keeps fit, he eats right, he's very disciplined and obedient. Um, like, for example, we, we have an open door policy at GCB, and every up time Shamar gets the opportunity, he would give us a call and check in to see you know, what he's doing wrong or what he can do right or how we could improve and so on. You know, so I, I, I don't see anyone stopping him. Yeah, he is clearly a tremendous talent, and uh, I, I noticed performances for the West Indies A team on the South Africa tour as well. I was um, watching an interview with him today, and he was saying that a few of the youngsters in Australia came up to him with pictures from his performances in South Africa, and he was saying, I don't know how they got those pictures, um, but clearly they are... Um, fans of myself um, and, and that was quite interesting because I think that says a lot about um, the quality that he has shown in the short time that he's been on that level but also the fact is this young man has only played five first class matches and I'm sure Mr. President there must have been some dissenting voices in Guyana about why he's been elevated to a number of these positions with very, very limited first-class experience. Um, I, I, if there is any, maybe very, very little. Uh, I, Shamar Joseph is a great find, and, and, and you enjoy watching him play cricket. And he's a guy, if he makes mistakes, you try to find out why. And the way his discipline, the way he carries himself, I am sure that he's going to make a lot of friends in the world. Yeah, for sure. He is um, a, a tremendous talent. The West Indies to play Australia in the first test starting on Tuesday, which, by the way, will be live on Sportsmax. And the expectation now is that he will make his uh, test debut. And, uh, of course, the partner, Alzari Joseph and uh, Kimar Roach. I want to get from you, Mr. President, because 
Um, on one end, on the, the rise of Guyanese cricket, uh, we're, we're talking about Shamar Joseph, um, a number of other Guyanese players in the various West Indies setups. Um, and at the same time, one of the most talented um, Guyanese players, Shimran Etmeyer, now on the outside looking in. I want to get how disappointed you are as president that someone with the quality of a Shimran Hetmar is not quite living up to that in West Indies colors. Um, look, Sh Shimran is quite young. Um, and I think there's a lot of room for, for elevation again. Um, every player, some, at some point in their, play, their, their game, they would have a bad patch. And I do hope that this is the case. Um, so I, we're not ruling out anything from Shimran. And I think that there's only a matter of time once you get this concentration and all the dots line up in the right order, I'm sure he'll be back. Sherman is a real classy player, and it's just a matter of time. Yeah, of course, yes, he is 27 years old, so you are right, there is very much time. I note that you said earlier that you have an open-door policy at the GCB. Is he the type of player that would reach out to you or that you could reach out to and have conversations with him to see what's going on and if there is any way the GCB can help him get back to a level that I think all Caribbean cricket lovers would love to see. Well, we actually do. Um, we had actually one time the entire board met with Chevron. And so when we have these meetings, we allow the players to do much of the talking. So you hear clearly what's going on on the other side. Um, and that's why I'm telling you from an inf informed position, I think it's just a matter of time. Uh, Shimron has his heart in the right, the right place, and he likes playing cricket. Um, he wants to play for his country. Um, he loves West Indies cricket. And so, I, as, as I'm saying, it's just a matter of time. And every player, I, you see why the spotlight is on Shimron, because the expectation is extremely high. Um, and so that's why people might feel a bit disappointed. But he's just a normal human being like all of us, and, and he's entitled to mistakes. So I guess it's just a matter of time before Shimron is back at the top there. Yeah, Basun DL Singh, it's a pleasure speaking with you. Um, thanks for giving us a little bit more information on Shamar Joseph, who has left tongues wagging down under with the first test approaching between West Indies and Australia. Thanks very much for chatting with us, and we'll chat again soon, I'm sure. Thank you, and it's a pleasure for ha um, having me. Yeah. Thank you very much. Lance, Mariah, um, this warm-up encounter between the West Indies and the Cricket Australia 11, um, West Indies leading by 214 runs. I quickly want to get your opinion. It's set to be 35 degrees Celsius on the third and final day, so extremely hot. Um, if you are in the position of Andre Coley, who is the head coach, would you be looking to push for a victory? Would you be looking to get your bowlers back out there for a second opportunity? Or would you be saying to the team, let's just bat as long as possible and call it an early day ahead of the first test? Well, there are a couple of things that we've got to look at here. And one of the pluses for this squad, for me, is a lot has been made of the fact that they're inexperienced and there are seven uncapped players in the squad. But the plus side of having so many uncapped players is that the Aussies know very little about them. And I say that to say this, that they are now playing in the warm-up match. There was a time when teams would actually hide some of these players in a tour match because they are going to play them in the test match and they don't want the opposition to work them out too much. So I don't know if that would be part of the consideration for Andre Coley exactly how he enters the final day's play because the Aussies would have seen some players that they know very little of and would be making their notes based on what they're seeing here. So I think th those, those factors may influence what the West Indies decides to do on, on the final day. But as I had said at the start, no one is disputing that Australia will be huge, huge favourites to win this series because they are the best in the world. The West Indies are ranked eighth in the world, and this is not even the strongest West Indies team on paper. So the odds don't favour them here. But I still think there are times when you have some uncapped players who have the stomach for the occasion. They may not have the experience and all of the technique to survive, but if the temperament is right and they've got the stomach for the, for the, for the battle, they could you know, show themselves to be a lot more competitive 
than, than many people think. So I'm awaiting to see how the series develops. But um, this has been an important fixture for them. And I think they would come out of this, regardless of what happens on the final day, with, with some level of confidence, even though they would know that the Australian eleven is going to be completely different and stronger than this Cricket Australia squad. Yeah, I think this practice match, Ricardo and Lance, was very, very important for these uncapped players to get their feet wet, for them to realize, you know, what type of opposition they will be against. And I'm pretty sure, because what usually happens with young players getting opportunities like this, because I belong to a household where I remember when Karishma got her first opportunity, what they tend to do is, because they're young, you know, they're bright-eyed, they're getting this opportunity against players that they only dreamt about playing against. And Shamar said that about Kimar Roach in his interview. He said, you know, he always admired watching Kimar Roach and to have the opportunity is such an honor to play alongside him. So I think these youngsters are going to do their research. They're going to come out, you know, all guns blazing. And I think their confidence is going to be right where we want it to be. Now, the execution part is something that we'll have to wait to see. But for me, getting their feet wet in this practice match was very, very important. And I have to say, the uncapped players, they've impressed me. I've said that already. Because to be playing on your first day, it's easy to make excuses. It's easy to get away with errors. Because we'll say they're new, you know, give them another opportunity. But they have got into this setup team and they have already you know, put their name out. Shamar Joseph is the one we're talking about, and it's his first game. Yeah, a couple of things. One, to the point that Mariah ended on, and Lance, you made the point as well. We have seen in the past where we've seen West Indies teams selected under harsh situations previously because senior players went on strike. Remember 2005 when Dinesh Ramdin came to the fore on that Sri Lanka tour was because a number of the senior players came on strike. Mm. Kimar Roach, the most successful West Indies fast bowler of the last 15 years, he came into the setup because the senior players went on strike for that Bangladesh tour in 20, 2009, yeah, yeah. 2021. Carl Mears. In that Bangladesh tour, and Kuma Bonner got an opportunity in yes. that tour as well. He averages 38 in Test cricket. So we've seen from time to time those shining lights. Um, and yeah, 2021, because of COVID 19, COVID. yeah, yes. and a few of the players deciding not to go. So we've seen shining lights in the past in situations like that where, quote unquote, under strength West Indies teams have been selected. I don't doubt that we will see. A similar situation. Maybe it will be Shamar Holder. Maybe it will be Kevin Sinclair. Uh, Sh Shamar Joseph. Yeah. Apologies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe it will be Kevin Sinclair. Maybe it will be somebody else. So yes, th there is always that possibility, and I, I don't doubt that someone will come to the party. Last year, Tesh Narayan Chandapal on his debut tour of Australia performed creditably, took on the Australian fast bowlers in his first test match with a half century and a 45. He returns this time around. Hopefully, he'll be able to perform even better, even though he hasn't shone in the warm-up matches. To Mariah's point, though, and I want to caution because I think this is so critical, this is a pretty average Cricket Australia 11. Average age, 23 years old. There's only one player. I think we have the batting 11. There's only one player in this Cricket Australia 11 who has any sort of test experience, and that's the captain, Peter Hanscom. I think we're going to get that squad um, shortly with 20 test matches. Outside of that, no test experience. Average age, 23 years old, as I, I pointed out. Um, here you have it. You have hands come with 166 first class matches. Doran has 66 first class matches. And then look at the others 28, 19, 5, 9, 3, 2, 4. So tremendous inexperience. Um, it is a youthful side as well. Um, and so I don't want us to get too carried away with the performance of the West Indies against these players because I don't think that the quality is great. Um, and I think there are many regional teams that you could put together 
that would run this Cricket Australia team to the wire if not beat them in three and, and four day games. So I think we have to be really cautious in how we assess the performances against this lineup. And I find that especially the bowling lineup is especially inexperienced. Um, and the, the quality that our batsmen will face against Australia is, is going to be drastically different, Lance and Mariah. No, we, I get what you're saying. But for me, it's like you just have to give the players the confidence right now against the opposition that they are put to play against. So for me, they could have gone against the same um, young team and, of course, flopped Ricardo. It could oh, have been then that. Then would be in then serious trouble. <laughs> that's, the, that's the point I'm making. So they have this opposition to face. They went with... Um, no experience at all. They were able to put some runs on the board. And don't get me wrong, the batting has been poor for the West Indies. A lot yeah. of single digits, a lot of the players that I expect to step up, not stepping up. So I get what you're saying. But for me, you know, there are a few bright lights. I don't expect it to be the same when they go up against the Australia team, the big team. Yeah. But of course, as it stands today, I'm going to say I'm still proud of what I saw, the effort yeah. against the Australia 11. I just want to say quickly, that this West Indies team, even if you take out the likes of a Craig Brathwaite and a Kimar Roach, probably has more experience, more first-class experience than this Cricket Australia eleven, And mm. that's, what, that's the point I really want to make um, with the, the quality of this Cricket yeah, Australia at, at, eleven. At the risk of playing devil's advocate, though... No, you can. I, I yeah, I'm, I'm, Australia's cricket is pretty deep. And although these players are young and inexperienced... They'll be good. Australian cricketers, as long as they are solid players in their Sheffield Shield uh, domestic, they can play cricket. So I, I, I think there is some quality there, even though they're inexperienced and young. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I accept agree. that the Australian test team that the West Indies will face next Tuesday is probably 10 times better than this team. And I guess maybe that's the point you're trying to make. Yeah. Well, some would say the but lack of quality was have. shown when West Indies took 6 for 22 after lunch on day two and the Cricket <laughs> Australia 11 ended bowled out for 174. Are we out of time for this segment? I think so. Yeah, we've been yeah. out of time. <laughs> yeah, we're sending Lance at the track. <laughs> <laughs>